This is Mitch, and welcome to 1000houses.com podcast, formerly known as the RE Investor Summit podcast, but we made a little switch here recently. Um, I have the distinct privilege and honor of having the one and only Robert G. Allen on the other side of this microphone, and it's been a long, long road of, of using his principles and a guy that changed my life in 1983. I was just telling him there was an exact pivot point when I started to take control of my life. And his book, uh, Nothing Down, uh, was right in the middle of it. Now, he's since written a lot of different books. Um, you know, uh, multiple streams of income, you might recognize. Cracking the Millionaire Code, The One Minute Millionaire. But today we want to talk about this book that I think everyone comes to the conclusion. You can study all you want to about how to make money, but until you get your house, your, your inside your house correct, until you get yourself inside ready, you, all the external stuff you do doesn't work. So Robert, that was a long introduction. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of excited to be with you today. Uh, thank you, Mitch. I'm honored that uh, you invited me to be here today. It may be that 2020 when we're recording this is going to be the day, the time for somebody watching this right now, like for you, and it was 1983. For me, it was 1974. <laughs> so we all have these moments when, you, when things just change and you struggle until that, you figure that out. So I guess I, you're right, I've written uh, all these best-selling books, I've sold millions and millions of copies, and I've got thousands of success stories. But when I look back over what causes that success, I, uh, as you were just saying, you are saying that you gotta get the inside right first. And when I, I did this crazy challenge that I've been kind of famous for, I said, send me to any city, take away my wallet, give me a $100 bill, and in 72 hours, I'll buy an excellent piece of real estate using none of my own money. Well, the LA Times challenged me, took me with a reporter, flew me to San Francisco, got off the plane, took away my wallet, gave me five $20 bills, and said, you have 71 hours and 59 minutes. If you haven't bought a property in the, in the next three days, your name will be mud uh, in, in the Los Angeles Times. Now, what I was trying to prove is just exactly what you said, Mitch. I was trying to prove that wealth is not money. The banker thinks you need to have cash, credit, cash flow, and collateral, those are the four C's. And if you're strong in all those four areas, the bank will lend you all the money you want. But if you're weak in any one of those areas, your credit sucks, or your income is not good, or whatever this COVID-19 situation is through you upside down, then, then, uh, then you don't, don't have access to the money. And what I was trying to say by going to San Francisco is take away from me all that the banker thinks is money, and let me show you what wealth really is. And so they took away all the things. I had no credit, no cash, no, no job, nothing. I had, I had 20, five $20 bills. And I followed a system that, uh, that we talk about in, in Nothing Down. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm more famous for, for really. But uh, what I should, what I will hope to be famous for is what's in this book, which is the four maps of happy, successful people. What that's I was trying to really do, start. That's where it really starts, right? Because the, what, what, what you here. took out in the street in, in, in San Francisco was, was your, your mind. You took your mind yeah. out there and your, and, your, and your belief in yourself and your, and, and your, your conviction. And, and without all that stuff, it doesn't matter how, how pencil smart you are. It doesn't matter because you're never going to get off square one and, and it's the four c's inside you so it's your courage it's your creativity it's your chutzpah it's your conviction as you're just saying it's your confidence there's all kind of those c words that are inside you and it's all inside you all wealth comes from inside you right now and if uh, you don't if you if you think you can't buy real estate with nothing down because you don't have any of the things that you think you need, what I was trying to prove by that challenge was, you, it doesn't matter what you don't have, as long as you have the internal part. Now, most people don't have the internal part because they've been beaten down by life and they've been, they've been told lots of lies about what success is. So when I went back over my career, my, my, the last book I wrote, 
was the four maps of half successful people. It doesn't seem like much of a money book, but frankly, money, uh, the techniques in nothing down or multiple streams of income, there are a lot of left brain techniques in there. And I call them system, system knowledge. It's like, you know, step by step by step, what do you do here, there, and there? But in addition to system knowledge, you need people knowledge, like how do you negotiate? How do you persuade? You know, how do you get somebody to trust you? That's important. That's usually not taught in any book. And then when it comes to the mindset knowledge, what happens on the inside of you, multiple streams of income, a very popular book sold almost a million copies. I don't talk about mindset at all in that book. Uh, in Nothing Down, in this book, I, don't, I, I don't hardly talk about mindset at all. Um, because most people think what they think they need is the system knowledge. You know, teach me how to, how do I find a highly motivated seller? And how, 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 do, how do I, you know, they always say how, 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 they always want to know how. And so the four maps is four maps that you draw every day. And by doing this, it actually builds your four C's. It builds your confidence. It builds your clarity. It builds your commitment. It, it builds uh, your, your conviction. It, it builds you a step at a time. And so I'm going to teach that if you give me a few minutes, Mitch. Sure. I want to teach that to everybody. So everybody get a blank piece of paper because you're all going to do the same thing that you watch me do. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to draw a frowny face. A frowny face. And that's not very hard to do. Even I can and do that. Everybody can do that. You just draw little slit eyes because it's easier to draw them. It's faster to draw. You know, I don't, I don't want anybody out there to say, well, I can't draw. If you can't draw that, you are in serious trouble. <laughs> you, you can draw this. Okay. And... We actually have emojis, so, you know. Yeah, you can do an emoji if you want to, but I actually physically want you to draw it. There's something magical happens when you physically draw the pictures I'm showing you how to do. Now, around this one, you're going to put a box. Around this one, you're going to put a box. So that's not hard to do. Uh, on this one, you're going to put a roof because this is where you want to go. This is your dream lifestyle where you live, how you live, with whom, whom you live, how much money you make, all that. This is your dream lifestyle. This is today. And so draw today's date, whatever, whatever today's date is for you. And, and then draw out five years from now. In this case, it'd be 2025. But actually, I want you, I want you to do the, the, the actual date. I'd like you to literally pick a, the today's date. And so this is where you are today. And the reason there's no roof on your head here is because most people are stuck in a box of fear. They are surrounded by fear almost all the time. And therefore, since they are immersed in fear, they find it difficult to take action because the fear holds them back. That's why procrastination is the biggest habit that most people have. They put it off because of these invisible fears. Sometimes they're conscious, sometimes they're unconscious, but they, they have lots of fears. There are five fears, F-E-A-R-S, fear of failure, fear of embarrassment, fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, and fear of success. And all of us have one of those or a combination of those, and those fears are expensive. They cost you a fortune. So what we gotta do is we gotta get outside of those fears. We gotta get outside of that box. And therefore, I'm going to ask you to look over the wall of the fear that's holding you where you're at and look and see where you want to be. And five years from now, how, how, how good do you want it? Um, don't ask how you're going to get there. Don't ask how you're going to get rid of the fear. None of those questions are important. The only important question is seven questions that are anybody in any grade school will know the questions. Question number one is, when do you want to live this lifestyle? When? And so I told you when, five years from today or sooner. I'm not going to go further than five years, but five years is a very realistic number. It's a number you could believe. And so it's all about belief. The question number two is, well, where? You know, 
where, where do you want to live? Where's your ideal lifestyle? Where, will you live in the same house, the same city, the same state, the same country? Where will you live? I'd like you to get more clear because this map is called the clarity map. Clarity map is basically getting really clear on what it is you want. And this is when you're, when you're really clear on what you don't want. See, fear is what you don't want. And when you feel it, and when you're intensely involved in it, you're essentially sending a message to yourself, I don't want this. And you're never going to get where you want to go from a don't want mindset. I want you to be in a want mindset. What do I want? What is important to me? So if, when and where and how much? I want you to get specific. Uh, if you tell me you want to be financially free, great. Tell me how much. How much is that to you? Is that $1,000 a month? Is that $5,000 a month? Is that $50,000 a month? Your brain is a computer, so it needs a number. So what is the number? And most people, when they tell me, oh, I don't want to be financially free, well, the brain goes, I'm a computer. Type in financially free on your computer. What does it give you? Nothing. There's, there's no number there. You need to compute. So how much? How much a month? Is that a monthly? Is it yearly? Is it weekly? Is it daily? You know, how, how much money? And I actually want you to pick a number. And I'm going to go totally against what everybody tells you. They always say, pick a big number. You got to think big. You got to dream big. And I think baloney. Do not think big. I want you to think about three times bigger than what you earn right now. In other words, I want that number to be realistic enough in your mind where you don't, where you don't go, that's BS, that's, that's not possible. I really love that. Two, three, four, four, five, five. Yeah, it's, be, why? Because I, I have so many people come up to me at seminars and they go, Bob, I wanna make a million dollars a week, you know? And do I know people who make a million a week? Yes, I do. I do. Uh, is the person telling that to me, you're going to make a million a week? No, ain't never going to happen. Because they are just out to lunch. And don't be out to lunch. I like you pick a realistic number, two, three, four times what you earn now, because that's believable. Uh, and you say, well, I don't want to be believable. I want to be really, really rich. Well, prove to me over the next year, that you're actually doing your plan towards this realistic number, and then I'll give you the permission to add a zero to it. But until you do, pick a number that's realistic. That's the third question. How much? Who? Who is going to help you? Who is going to be there with you? Who is going to win when you win? Who is going to help you win? You know, you're the little, little red hen, so who's helping you make the bread? Uh, and so, tell me who they are, who's important in your life, right? So where, when, why? Why do you want this? Why do you want this? Well, some people just, they are just born with that. They want to be wealthy. They just do. I do not understand why we do, but that was certainly in my programming. And it wasn't until I graduated from college to go get a job to be an employee like my father was that I finally understood that I wasn't an employee. And there are two kinds of people in the world, employees and entrepreneurs. Employee are security minded. They wanna make small, slow money. Entrepreneurs are freedom minded and they, may want, they wanna make big, fast money. And it's just their programming. It's just the way they are. They kind of come that way. And you, I don't know how, who you are. Can you make money as an, uh, as an employee? Can you become wealthy on the side? Yes, you can. You can make this your side hustle. But your mindset stops many employees because they won't take risks because security is their fundamental value. So you just have to realize that. You know, who am I? Am I a... Am I, am I an employee or an entrepreneur? I was an uh, entrepreneur. Nobody would hire me during the, that recession of when I graduated from college and I sent out 30 letters to the 30 greatest corporations in the world, General Foods, General Mills, General Electric, General Motors, and generally everybody I could think of. And I got 30 rejection letters from these 30 major corporations. I still have them. And I was devastated. 
because I was an employee minded. I was, I was, I'd been trained from my entire schooling to be employee minded, get a job, work for your work for somebody else. But about a week into it, with those letters laying on my bed and looking at those layers, those letters all laid out in front of me, I had an epiphany. I had an aha. I had, I got up, I got ticked off. I looked at those letters and I said, who are these people? I questioned who they were. And I said to myself, one day, I'll never forget saying this, one day I will earn more money than all 30 of the people who signed these letters to reject me. It was what an entrepreneur does, they love a challenge. And eventually it bubbles out of them. And until that, until that moment, I didn't know I was an entrepreneur. But as soon as I knew that, as soon as, soon as I, I, got, I got pissed off, I said, one day. And so how will I do it, you know? Well, I'd read a book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, and it seems like that's a book everybody's read, and another one on Rhett Nickerson on how to buy real estate. And I said, I'm, I'm going to take the $1,000 that my dad gave me for graduation, and I'm going to go buy a piece of real estate, and I'm going to become a millionaire. And therefore, without a job, without being hired by one of these corporations, I started buying my first property, second, third, fourth, fifth, 10th, 12th, 20th, 30th property, and became a millionaire in the next three to five years. I still can't remember when it happened, but I, I watched it. You know, I, I did, I did my, my financial statement. So what, what I'm trying to say is I don't know who you are, but if you're an entrepreneur, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to tell you, what are you thinking? What do you think you can do this? Why are you even listening to this guy? Why are you listening to us? What, what makes you think you can pull this off? I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to say you can't do it. I'm going to tell you this, it's a crock. <laughs> Although Mitch has bought thousands of properties, and I certainly have never bought that many, Frank Mitch, but I have students who have bought, who bought thousands and thousands and thousands. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to go, I'm going to prove that Robert Allen wrong. I'm going to actually, I'm going to find that guy. I'm going to, I'm going to show him I could buy a property with nothing down. <laughs> and I have had thousands of people come up to me and say, Robert, I bought my first property nothing down so clarity is what this map is about clarity means what do you want what what do you want what this is a very important question what, what, what do, you, do you want do you want more money do you want more love in your life do you want more health as a body do you want more free time I, I don't know but just tell me what what do you want tell me what you want Tell me what kind of lifestyle you want. What's that? Why is that important to you? What do you want? When do you want it? Where do you want it? Why do you want it? Who do you want it? And then, of course, the final question is, and how much do you want? How are you going to get it? And this is the weakest question because everybody's path is different. Mitch's path is different than my path is different. You have your own circumstances, your own problems, your own income, your own relationships. I don't know what they are. All I know is if you know clearly what you want, you're going to figure it out using, you can use, you know, all the books that have been written about it. Uh, but remember, remember, they are system knowledge. So I'll teach you systems. I'll teach you how to buy real estate. I'll, I'll tell you how to find how bargain properties, how to fund those bargain properties, how to farm those bargain properties. Those are the three fundamental skills. But the bottom line is if you don't have the courage to do it, if you don't have the mindset to do it, the heart to do it, the drive to do it, the why to do it, doesn't matter what I teach you. You know, it doesn't matter how all the systems, I, I, and you might have heard them a thousand times. The systems are pretty simple. They're pretty basic. It just means go freaking do it. And that's really hard for a lot of people to do it because they get stuck in this box. And the reason is they, they never get out of the box. I'm asking you to go out of your box every single day and draw this map. I want you to say to yourself, I want this kind of love in my life. I want this kind of help in my life. I want this kind of free time. I want this kind of money. This is important to me. This is what I want. And why do you want it? So, you know, you should ask yourself that question. Why is it important for you to do this? 
to overcome the fear that slows you back, to get out of your box down here? What's going to force you to get out of it? Well, is it your family? Is it your, is it your, just your pride? Is it your willing, you want to give back to the world? You don't have anything to give back yet, but you'd like to get something to give back. First of all, you're probably going to start off with a very selfish motive, selfish why, uh, or it'll be a need why. I need this. I need this. You know, I got a, I got a mortgage payment I got to pay. I need it. Uh, then it's going to be, I, I want, I want this. It'll be very greedy, very personally oriented to you. And then ultimately, when you start really making the money and you realize that you have the secret now, you figured it out, you have to give it back. You have to share it with other people. So I, I, uh, I wrote my book and, I, and Mitch read it, uh, along with millions of other people, and many of them did it. And so why would I teach people my secrets why don't i keep all my secrets to myself so i can have all the bargain properties in america well that's not that was not my why my why was i want to write a book i want to share that message i want other people to succeed like i succeeded so eventually one day you will do this and then you will write a book about it and you will share it with other people you'll tell other people about it you, you can give it away for free yeah, there, there's, look, there's his book. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, thousand, yeah, thousand houses. Holy smokes, isn't that amazing? <laughs> that was a couple of thousand houses ago, but anyway, so yeah. who's counting? Who's counting, Robert? You know? Yeah, exactly. So but I do, I do, I do want to say it's the same transition. I started out wanting to make a lot of money. At some point, I figured out money, money, money wasn't the end all. It was just a part of the deal, and that there had to be a higher reason, a bigger reason for the whole thing. And, and if you're really lucky, you'll get to that part faster. So, and this is what you're talking about. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm right with you. Finishing up the map, there are actually uh, two, two more pieces to the map. You could write down 50 things you want. And many people tell you, you should write down all your goals. You should write down 5,000 goals because it inspires your mind. I'm going to say just the exact opposite. I want you to clearly decide on three, three, it, only three. Why? Because it forces you to get really clear. What is number four? And you have to really have to decide. Is number four, is it, is it more important than number three to me? If it isn't number three, then it's, and it's zero. I want three specific targeted objectives for you. Three, only three. And I want you to commit to them and saying, I don't care what else happens in my life. I don't care how many children I have, what places I travel to in the world, what my golf score is, how much I weigh. I don't care. These three things are so important to me that I'm going to write them down every day. Um, this is what I want. Now, it could be money things. It could be relationship things. It could be, you know, health things. It could be time places you want to travel. I, for me, they are business targets. You know, I, I usually have three, three financial goals that I'm uh, focusing on. I do my personal growth things in a different map. This map is really kind of like, how do I want my business life to be? The, 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 so you write down three things and make sure they're, they're specific. I mean, they've got to be number oriented. It's got to be numbers attached to them. And then the, I, I do want you to tell me what don't you want? What are three things that you would, if you could eliminate with a magic wand right now, they're gone. What would you like to eliminate? Why do I bring that up? Because I was talking about the neg negative power of fear and how it keeps you stuck. Some people are motivated by not having something. They're motivated by lack. They're motivated by 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 uh by fear by by a nightmare some people are motivated by dreams and some people are motivated by nightmares they have a nightmare they have a problem going on it forces them out of their comfort zone they go and they do and they make it happen um we call that moving away from in nlp they call that the moving away from motivation there are people who are motivated by moving towards something towards a dream 
about a third of the people you'll meet are motivated by moving away from what they don't want. Therefore, for that reason, I'm going to have you make sure you write down what it is you don't want and how badly you don't want it. You know? Then I want you to write down three things that you do want. So, so there are two forces that are getting you out of this box. There's, there's the force that pushes you. You know, and usually it's, a, it's something negative. It's something that's, you know, you, 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 you're tired of being broke, right? That's a, that's a negative uh, motivation. I never will live in a neighbor like, neighborhood like this again. You know, that's a negative motivation. Um, my dad beat the crap out of me. I will not treat my kids that way. Never will I touch my children. That's a negative motivation. What, what is pushing you outside your box of fear? And then what is pulling you? Pull. What pulls you? And most people, they have this, the, the, the negative motivation, the fear, but they, they don't intensify this. Because sometimes they think it's not realistic. For me to have this kind of dream, you know, who am I to have this kind of a dream? And therefore, they don't even like to dream. And maybe because they've failed a bunch of times and they've dreamed and it didn't come out and they failed. And so they go, I don't even dare dream anymore. It's just so disappointing when I fail. Well, sorry, you're going to have to dream. Dream is really, really, really important. I need you to get clear. Just make sure don't make your, make sure your dream is, is more realistic. Usually that'll be helpful to you so that you know you so you can reach it. Then I want you to sign your name to that, you know. This is what I don't want. This is what I do want. This is why I want it. This is why it's important to me. And I want you to draw this map every day, at least for the next 30 days in a row. Now, the book, The Four Maps of Having Successful People, explains it with, with uh, pictures that, that you can see like that. You know, it shows you how I just drew what I just drew. That you can see what I drew is exactly that. It's, 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 it's easy to draw. And when you draw it every day, it forces you to, to get clear. And what will happen in the 30 days is that you will go, do I really want that? It will actually cause you to question. And sometimes you'll shift your priorities and sometimes you'll, t you'll throw some of them off completely. You, eventually over 30 days, you will settle in on, you know what? This is what I want and I want it. And nobody is going to stop me from getting it. Now that's not number one. And I, and Steve and I, or Mitch, I don't think we have enough time for me to teach the other three maps, but I'll tell you what they are. Map number one is a, is a right brain map. It taps into your dream site. And it's extremely important. It's also into the emotional part. I want you to feel what it feels like to live this. Once you get there, feel it. Feel what it's like, what it like in all five senses. So you'll get a, a, a sense of what it's like when you achieve that. The, the second map is almost the exact opposite. It's like the left brain map. It's the attorney map, frankly, coming out. And it's the map that goes, you know what? There are a lot of things that could stop you, brother. Hey, sister, you got some challenges. And, you know, if, you, if you're not really smart about this, you, you can't go off half cocked. Um, most entrepreneurs do go off half cocked. And then they, that's why 90% of them fail. And a few of them succeed because they figure it out. But most people do not think about the consequences at all. Most entrepreneurs don't have that as a part of, it's not a part of their thinking. They, their gene is missing when it comes to the consequences. But I'm going to ask you to, to write down what five major consequ consequences could happen. And once you're prepared for the consequences of mistakes, of failure, of challenges, of sudden storms, of 
Was the COVID-19 a sudden storm? Middle of March, they shut the country down? Could you have anticipated that? No, that's why it's one of the challenges in map number two, it's called the anticipation map. To anticipate, to look in the future just a little bit and be realistic with me for a minute, what could go wrong? Number one that could go wrong, you get so overwhelmed with all the little things, you're doing the, 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 the little things on your to-do list and leaving the big things last and therefore you're always pushing them off. That's called the, the whirlwind and we're all in a whirlwind, I'm in a whirlwind. You're in a whirlwind. We got stuff we got to do every day. But we have to fit it all in. You have to, you know, I have to fit in. You have to fit in this every day. You don't fit yeah, this so, in every day. It pushes off in the future. So, so yes, let's but, talk about this. You, you talked about the picture su superiority effect and that when you see and draw something, it has a bigger effect on your brain than when you when you uh, write or read, uh, read something. Can you, because you're doing this very specifically, you're not telling us to read like the old um, um, psycho cybernetics with malts and everything. Read your goals, read your goals, read your goals. You're pushing it further saying, I want you to not just have the picture, but I want you to physically draw it. Tell us exactly. the science behind that. Yeah, I, I want you to draw this. Every day. Uh, something, let me tell you why. What percentage of people are left brain versus right brain oriented? Uh, I, I don't know the actual number. Uh, I just know that it's predominantly, most people are visual. And yet all of the training tools, all the organizational tools are all left brain. They are that's, right. That's why, that's, that's why we fall asleep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They're all left brain. Uh, and, and therefore, three quarters of us are told to use a tool that is like we speak Spanish and the tool is in German. And therefore, it's a tool that doesn't work for us. And then they tell us that to, use the, to, to, to use a to-do list. A to-do list is the, one of the worst tools you can use. It actually makes you fail because it rewards you when you cross things off your to-do list for doing this fun, fast, simple, easy things. And, 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 and when you cross those things off, it's almost orgasmic, like, oh, I get to cross things off my to-do list. Um, some of the things on your to-do list will never be crossed off. Why? Because they're your life and your family. Is, is, most people never put their family on their to-do list. And therefore, they never cross them. You know, they don't even notice them. They're always looking at inconsequential crap. That's what a to-do list is. The worst man time management tool there is. And what this is, is it, it forces you to, to visually imagine and feel what it feels like to have that. Then when it comes to the anticipation map, I'll, I'll show you what that one looks like. It... it It highlights, you know, the the challenges, the you know, the, the being stuck in the in the whirlwind. Most people are stuck, and the, and therefore they're doing little things, and they're never getting anything big thing done. They the learning curves, the the marshmallows, the cliffs, the 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 sudden storms. We had a sudden storm here recently, and when when you do the anticipation map, it just takes a couple of minutes. You you're basically saying to yourself. I want to get here, and these five obstacles are going to try to stop me, and I'm not going to let them. I'm going to actually draw them out, and as soon as I notice one of them in real life, I'm going to go, ah, <laughs> that's the whirlwind, ah, that's, that's the learning curve, you know, ah, that's the sudden storm. In other words, by, by naming them in advance, you steal their power. Most people don't name their fears in advance, and therefore when they show up, they, they are not prepared to deal with them. And so in this anticipation map, it, it, it prepares them. The third map is called the ritual map. Everybody who's successful has a ritual, and they do their ritual every day. And the ritual is for preparing themselves to go into the world. As my mentor Stephen Covey would say, you know, every day you need a daily
private victory so that you can go into the world and have a daily public victory. Your ritual is your daily private victory. It's planning, it's preparing, it's meditating, it's, it's praying, it's, it's organizing, it's reading, it's working on the three fundamental areas of you, your body, your brain, and your spirit. And when you focus and, and, and work on all three of those in preparation mode, every day before you go into the world, you are ready. You are more ready for whatever the world throws at you. It builds your will. This is a place to build your willpower. And willpower is the power. It's the power. And most people have run out. See, when you do your to-do list, you usually do the little things first. So it uses up all your willpower. And by the time you get to the end of the day, you have depleted your willpower. And therefore you go, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. And then you write your to-do list the next day, exactly the same way you did it today, which is let's go do all the fun, fast, frivolous things. And therefore it destroys your, your willpower. It forces you to look for the, the little things to do. Um, just, I do just the opposite. What's the hardest thing I can do today? Let me do that first. Let's get that out of the way. It might take all day long. I saw a word. I saw a word in your writings. It was uh, neuroplasticity. Can you talk yeah. to me about that? Well, that's just the way your brain stays young. It uh, is like exercising your mind, your brain, um, and that's neuroplasticity. That's the making your brain more, more. Uh, usable more more flexible more plastic as they say uh, so you know i'm 72 um i'm cranking along just like just like i was 32. um i read i have i have my ritual i do every day i read a lot um Warren buffett can read five hours a day i can read at least an hour or two you know so i find it i find it interesting because a lot of the things that i had to discover myself um, by trial and error or just by finally screwing up enough that it became apparent. Um, you're like really dissecting here. Like one thing I found is when you named, when, when you figured out what you were afraid of and you actually started to address it, that dragon shrunk dramatically once you started, yeah. when you decided to get nose to nose with it and that we're going to have a war and that I'm not going to run from you anymore. I'm going to go just like the bully at the, the, on the neighborhood. I mean, you know, even the bully at school might whip your ass, but, but you just got to make it to where it's not worth it to do it again. You know, just, you know, so I found every time I named my fears and said, so I, I became a rule. Every time I'm afraid of something, I'm going right to that. I'm going to go right to that till I understand why am I afraid of it? Why, why is it making me afraid? And then how do I stop that? And pretty soon those, those dragons would shrink immensely, but I'm finding, I'm wondering if it's a dragon shrunk or if you grew. Uh, it's a combination of both, I think. Probably he wasn't nearly as ugly and nasty as you built him up to be. And two, you're stronger than you thought you are. Um, yeah. I like that. So, but so, you know, these concepts, sometimes it's hard to invent new concepts or new ways. But sometimes someone's voice has a better way of reaching you. And I find your voice for me to be magnificent. I mean, you reach me you have a way of cutting through all, all my stuff and getting to me. And I think you've had that effect on a lot of people for a lot of years because of the way you put it, the, the way that you diagram it, the way that you, the way that you explain yourself. Um, so you guys, if, if you have a chance, tell them how to get, get more information from you, how to learn more about this book, how to get this book, tell them what you want them to do. Well, it, obviously the four maps of have successful people, available on Amazon. It's a, it's a Kindle book. You can order it physical or Kindle. Uh, it's very inexpensive, but it's, it's my lifetime, really, summarized the four major skills. That if you want to be really successful, these are, these are, these are how, you, how do you organize your life? That's the task map. This is, what, this is what your organization looks like. This is not a to-do list. It's actually a drawing. It shows you how to focus in on the three projects that you've got to do every day. Uh, reaching me, um, I, you can reach me at robertallen.com. So just go there and, and uh, enter your email address. And, and then I will send, I send out usually every week 
be, for those people who res, who respond there, a a, um, a communication. Uh, usually, it's on email. Uh, some something that I've written for you to study that week about mindset or money set. About uh, recently, I did a, a you know my favorite side hustle, that kind of thing. So uh, if you want to learn more, just go there and, and uh, I'll communicate with you regularly and we could uh, we can become friends. Okay, so again, I'm going to put all this in the show notes over at uh, 1000houses.com forward slash Robert Allen, but you can go to robertallen.com. Before we go, Robert, I'd like to ask you some, some kind of bullet point, quick, quick question answer, a little bit about the man, Robert Allen. Um, do you mind? Can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Okay. What drives Robert Allen? Uh, to create. I like to create. Okay. Uh, like what, per what person or event has had the biggest influence, uh, had a big influence on you? Mm, that's, that's a hard one because there are so probably many, lots of them, right? So many. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Well, you know, I, I told the story of my, 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 my uh, having trouble finding a job in, in a terrible a job market, as some many people are finding that right now. I use that as an excuse to become an entrepreneur, and and it was from the, the, that worst recession that came my greatest fortune. I was within five years. By the time we we're out of the recession, I was I was a, mul a multimillionaire. So, great, 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 great answer because. Some of the worst things that happened to us are the best things that ever happened to us. And we, 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 we it's not for a while till we figure out that it is, but you no, know, I, I and we wouldn't use them ourselves. We wouldn't say, Oh, you're going to grow this much if you have this kind of pain and you would go, no, nope, I don't think so. I'll just stay inside my comfort zone. So life is designed to force you outside your comfort zone a thousand times and you either shrink or you grow as a result of it. And you can see the results everywhere you look. Some people are shrinking. Some people are growing. There is no neutral, is there? There is no neutral. You're either being worth more or worth less. You're either growing or you're not, or you're shrinking. There's no yeah. neutral ever. Yeah. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. People and say, well, I just kind of want to hold where I'm at. So you're not holding where you're at. You're going backwards if you're not moving forward. So. Um, well, right. some, people, some of you are interested in, in, in writing a book. You know, I'm just doing a program recently. Where I, I coach people on how, how to write a best-selling book. So if you go to robertallen.com and just enter your name in there, I'll tell you more about that. Well, that'll probably be me. Uh, I'll show yeah, up. Yeah, want to write another one, Mitch? Uh, I'm trying to do book number four, so, you know. Uh, there you go. No. I'm at 12, but, you know, I should be at 20, 20 or 30 by now. Well, you know, sometimes it's not about quantity. It's about quality. So, I mean, you, you know, you write 12 really good books. That's a quite an endeavor. Um, what, what made you want to start? I mean, when did you start writing? When did you find out that writing was your gig? When I was 24, I took a class from Stephen Covey. He challenged us to write our goals. Why I wrote these three goals, I don't know. But I said, I want to go scuba diving, and I did. I want to go skydiving, and I did. And I want to write a book, and I did. The book happened after I graduated from, you know, from university. This would have been, you know, five, four or five years later after the class that Stephen Covey wrote. But that thought had always, always been planted in my head. I wanted to write a book. So I had this epiphany one day driving down the freeway. It's time to write your book now, you know, and it was like now, like not now, but like now, you know. <laughs> And so I, I was a, a real estate agent at the time and dealing with people who were buying investment properties and, and I would buy them too. And I walked into my boss's office uh, and I said to him, I'm sorry, I have to write my book now. So I'm going to give you back my real estate license. I will never sell another piece of real estate as a commissioned agent ever again. I, I, like, I like to make these statements, and I, may, I gave him his, my license back, and um, I, I began to write nothing down. Um, 
we went to Hawaii for our anniversary that year. That's how I sold my wife on it. Let's go write my book in Hawaii. And uh, I wrote the main outline of Nothing Down. And I came back and found somebody who had had a number one New York Times bestseller. And I said to her, Diane, show me what to do. And she said, we're going to go to the booksellers convention. And um, as they say, the rest is history. Uh, it was... Um, it, it was just me deciding that it was time to write the book, and, and it came out exact came out in 1980. So it was just as we were just coming out of the recession, and just as things were starting to open up, and Reagan had just won, and it was, um, and, and the book was at a time when people, when the baby boomers wanted to buy real estate, and a lot of them didn't have any money, so my book was just the, if I'd wait in a year or two, it would have been too late. It was like the perfect time, the perfect storm. And wow. so still today I get royalties from that book I wrote 40 years ago. I still get royalties every six months from a book I wrote 40 years ago. And you've written the editions, you know, nothing down for the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. So you, you always kind of brought it back and revamped it. Um, yeah. I, I, but I have some personal interest in these answers to these questions. Was writing a book excruciating for you or just difficult or fun or, or what, what level, how, how difficult was writing a book for you? Um, I don't have a problem with it. I, I write. Okay. I, I like to organize. That's one of my skills. I like to organize and what are the steps to take them to the result? How do I make them simpler? Uh, that's another one of my skills to make things simpler. Absolutely. And, That's what I need because uh, I'm a slow study. I need it sometimes. And I just have to have the, the, the drive to continue to write the words down, right? How um, long were you in Hawaii to write your outline? We were there for two weeks. And in two weeks, I came home with the outline, found the, the, my mentor within another couple of weeks, uh, wrote, had one chapter written, did not written the entire book, but had one chapter written. Uh, with an outline, sexy titles, you know, silkscreen covered, covered. We went to the booksellers convention and I handed it out to, to the top publishers and Simon and Schuster wanted it. Wow. A dream. All right, my friend, anything you want to say to those entrepreneurs out there before we part? I, I just love your story, Mitch. You, you really... You really did it. You know, you did a whole heck of a lot more than I did. I'll tell you that. I might have been an inspiration to you, but boy, you just went and did it like crazy. Incredible. It, you know, one of the things you said about confidence, I mean, uh, you have to, the reason why I like to keep small goals and I never was a big goal maker either. I always just, I needed something within my reach because once I reached it, I would get confidence and the confidence was all I needed. Like trying to find private money to fund your deals. Everybody's scared to death of that topic. You get one guy, it's Katie bar the door, but you got to get the one, you know, yeah, uh, once you get the one, you got the fever. Once you do the one house, you got the fever. Once you do a nothing yeah, down deal yeah, one time, you, yeah. you know, it's like, damn, I get it now. You know, I did, right. my nothing, I did my nothing down deal on accident, but I was based on your principles. I kept pushing back scenarios that I could do because I didn't have any other choices. So I would always push back my offer. You, you, would, you, you had resonated in me like um, push, don't let the deal die on your side of the table and push back something you can do no matter how ridiculous it is because someone's going to say yes sometime before it's over with. And I push back this ridiculous, I can't make a down payment. I can't make a payment for two years. I can't do anything. And the guy said yes. <laughs> and, 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 you know, that, that was my first house, of, you know, a house every four to five days. Very shortly after that, my first year I did 45 houses. My second year I did 65 houses. My third year I did 150 houses, which is too much. And anyways, uh, it was, it was life altering. Say that one more time. Your first year you did how many? I, I quit in March of 1996 and I did 45 houses. And then, and then the next year, the 97, I did 100, I did 65 houses. And then the next year I did 150. And then that was too many. So I, I bumped back down to like, Ron Legrand told me, you know, he embarrassed me in front of a whole program. He says, you know, I said, I did, you know, I did 150 houses this year. You know, I was right at the end of the year when I was at his convention. He goes, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this guy's a dumbass. You know, here I am standing up in front of 300. Because, people. because? He said, like, you know, why don't you do a little bit less, make more and have a life? And it was, <laughs> he, was, he, he, he was right. He was dead on right. 
Uh, and he gave me, you know, he gave me, you know, shortly after that statement when I was turning red in front of everybody, he said, um, uh, you know, a lot of people would like to be, a lot of y'all would like to be as dumb as this guy, but he says, and then he, you know, we kind of joked, but he said, you know, I'm just trying to suggest to you that maybe you do less, do better quality and have a real life and get under control because 150, you know, closings, that's a closing acquiring and then a closing selling almost every day. And that's almost impossible. You know, it's a yeah. lot of stress, you know, so he was well, right. Congratulations, Mitch. You know, uh, honestly, I, I had never heard of you for, before, Mitch. Oh, well, the, hey, I'm the best kept secret in the whole wide world. Believe me. <laughs> what's shocking to me is that the, uh, in this, just in this last year, I've had bunches of people pop up who I've never heard of before. Who, who give me as part of the credit of their success. And I am stunned by how a few ideas can change people's lives so much. And it's very humbling. It's, it's well, I very- hope you never get tired of it because basically I, I could get emotional about it. I'm just been fighting it right now. I could get emotional because I was in a very bad place. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a college degree. No one wanted to pay me. I was, I was, um, you know, I was lost in and, and my family wasn't talking about it. My school didn't teach me anything about it. No one was telling me anything that you told me And between you and, and malts, like controlling my thoughts and, and then you telling me that I could do something with nothing. Yeah, and then yeah. um, um, think and grow rich telling me that some of the richest people in the world never had one ounce of schooling and they were placed in corners to where they had to go invent their own business because no one would hire them in a million years. And then every time they figured out how to increase that business, they were the hundred percent recipient of it. That's what happened to me. Actually, I made a conscious decision decision to take having a job off the table because I was told by a POW one day that how he made it through was um, if you had enough water and enough protein, and if you didn't, if this, if you could keep a hold of this, that your body would figure everything out and it would survive everything. And I, I believe that guy. He was a prisoner in war of the Bay of Pigs. He was in Castro's <laughs> prison for 24 months as a traitor to his country, where they did awful things to him every day, starting in the morning. And I thought, here I am in San Antonio, Texas. If I, t- and I knew what I needed to do. I needed to invent my own thing because if I wasn't going to be entrepreneurial, no one was ever going to pay me. I'd already been 10 years doing this stuff, and I couldn't make more than 15 bucks an hour. I didn't have the credentials, but I was making them lots of money. I was responsible. I was honest and they weren't paying me what I needed to be paid. And so I took having a job off the table. I thought, what's the chances that I'm not going to get enough clean water in, in San Antonio, Texas? Well, that's a zero. What's the chances I'm not going to get enough protein or I'm not going to eat. I mean, in, in the greatest country in the world in a booming city with a supportive family. I mean, what's the chances that I'm not going to get enough to eat? So I had to, con- when my mind was, I didn't have to, um, I didn't have to control my mind from going insane like this POW did. I just had to control my mind to not take a job so I could back this body back in a corner so hard that it would have to come out and do something. And it invented how to make money. And, you know, I, I, my first goal was tiny, like you said. I just want to know how to make $15 an hour so I don't have to answer to anybody else. And I learned, you know, I didn't do it overnight. But then I did. But then when I learned how to make $30 an hour, I was 100% recipient. When I learned how to make $50 an hour, I mean, one time, you know, I got up to making like $800 an hour. And you think that's fun, but it has its downsides too. You have to constantly be learning from people. My my wife would say to me, you know, hey, Mitch, you know, can you pick up the dry cleaners? I'm like, honey, I'm worth $800 an hour. Can someone (laughs) pick up the dry cleaners? I learned that, that mindset from someone else too. I didn't invent that. They said, you know, you can't work below your wages. I've learned a lot of this stuff through these people. But, you know, was that a fun night at my house? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, Mitch, thank you so days, much. Uh, let's, let's do another webinar one of these days where I can take them deep and show them some more stuff. Uh, happy to do that with you. But look, we did principle one. Let's have one on principle two and principle three if you want to. We'll schedule it. You know, I'll have Julie call you right when we're done and you say when. And if that's what you want to do, we'll do. If you want to do something different, we'll do something different. But yeah, I am great. completely uh, enthralled in the way that you're putting it because I think you're right on. I think you're dead on. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of yours, but I think you're topping yourself right here. Uh, well, I'll talk myself again, but think of that. All right, Mitch, you have a wonderful day. I love you all. See y'all, everybody. God bless.
All right, this is, this is Mitch Steven with 1000houses.com podcast. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for stopping by to get you some Robert G. Allen, and maybe we'll see him again here soon. All right, this is Mitch Steven. We're out of here.